this is the phone itself. It's well made. It has this aluminium body which runs right through the centre of the phone as its main structure behind which is this soft touch. It feels almost rubberized but it's not back with camera, flash and fingerprint reader. You don't see many fingerprint readers on phones in this price range and then the glass front and if you look closely you'll see there's also a screen protector already fitted. I always like to see those because it keep, it, you know that the phone is going to remain in top condition apart from fingerprints that is because it is quite prone to picking those up as indeed all phones are. One feature I was very pleased to see is unlike many phones today it has a removable back helps if you've got long nails which can be removed relatively easily And now a really good feature is this battery is removable. I always like to see those because it means you can carry a spare in case you need it. Also, space for two SIM cards and an SD, a micro SD memory card up to sort of 64 gigabytes. So lots of space there for storing apps and lots of photos, which I'm sure you'll want to take using this camera, which is rather good, but we'll come on to that later. So replace the back by clicking it into place. And with a quick look at the phone. There's a micro USB charging port at the bottom, volume rocker switch, power button on and off, and a 3.5mm jack plug to use with either headphones or an external speaker. So I power it on and see how long it takes to boot. It's pretty quick there. Let's see how long it is until it's ready for use. Here's the Android. It's not the fastest phone. It has to be said. but it is worth the wait. There we are, ready to go. And it's going to Wi-Fi. It's already connected instantly, which is good. And one thing you'll notice with this is it has an excellent screen. It's an IPS screen. It's visible from pretty much all angles. It's very bright. The colours are nice and vivid and it's quite attractive. It's a resolution of 1280 by 720, but looking at it, I think it actually looks a lot more than that because it's so clean, so crisp, so bright. Really nice screen to use there. To access the menus, this is pure Android. Click on the settings, and then you can scroll down for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Hot Knot, that's disappointing, you would have liked to have seen NFC. The two SIM cards, one of which you can set for data, and another for calls, however it works out best in terms of economy. It supports gestures, which is good, although I tend not to use those, and fingerprint recognition. Um, I won't demonstrate that now, but basically you insert your finger there, and if that doesn't work, which it doesn't always, then you just enter a pin instead. The phone is pure Android, so it's very easy and very intuitive to use. It's running a version of Android 5.1, not the latest, but it's not far off. And as you've seen as I plough through those menus then, it is very responsive. It comes with a number of apps pre-installed, which are accessed via this button here. As you can see, it's got all the things you'd expect, calculator, calendar, camera, there's a clock, alarm clock, list of contacts, usual email, I downloaded Facebook, it's got the radio and there's a sound recorder and I like this program to the Google Photos so every time you take a photo with the camera it's automatically uploaded to your Google account for backup. I think that's really good. Not all camera phones are compatible with that program. In fact talking of compatibility, unfortunately there's one program this 
phone isn't compatible with and that's BT Wi-Fi which living in a rural area and relying on Wi-Fi is something I tend to use a lot but it's not the end of the world because as you saw when I switched on this phone it connects to Wi-Fi instantly anyway and even fairly weak signals are found easily by this phone which is good to see. One thing you might notice is when I'm going back a screen I'm tapping a button on the left whereas the convention is normally you have the button on the right to go back a screen so I'm consciously having to remember to tap on the left instead of the right but it's a habit you quickly get used to. But what I'm very pleased to see with this is there's no bloatware. The programs installed are all the essentials and precious space isn't filled up with junk as you get on some manufacturers phones such as Samsung for example and any apps that aren't installed you can quickly download from the Play Store and the link is already there. One of the best features of this phone it has to be said is the camera which is quite superb. It's also a very flexible camera let's move it there so I don't get a photo in my hand. The focus is very good because I'm focusing on a bit of dust on my desk I like the fact it's got so many settings and you can also take photos in many different sizes such as one megapixel for quick and easy uploads particularly if you're on a restricted data package it keeps your data usage as low as possible or if you want really good quality photos you can go right up to 13 megapixels and this is a genuine 13 megapixel camera not one that's actually interpolated into 13 megapixels so that's good too Video is superb. It films in widescreen in the fine mode, but the slight disappointment is it films in 3GP as opposed to MP4. That's not going to be an issue for most people because you're probably not going to do extensive editing. But if you are, not all software packages are compatible with 3GP. Just something to bear in mind. I'll just look at a few of the photos, just as samples. On the photo, I don't know if you can see it, but you can actually pick up the raindrops on the primroses there. It's a local church. Local scenery, landscape shots. You can see on the text there, everything is in focus, which is very good. And this is taken at just one megapixel, so that's at its worst possible resolution, the lowest resolution. I'll just look at a couple of videos here just to show what the playback is like and how it records my voice. Here's a sample video clip from the phone to show how well it films and how well the microphone works. There's a chainsaw in the background which you may hear. It's auto focus, auto exposure, pretty much auto everything. And as I've been filming, you probably noticed that the exposure did change to compensate for the dark scene earlier. And now if I touch the touch screen, you should see further changes see that the exposure brightened and the more distant subjects came into focus. It's also possible to pause while filming, which can save on a lot of editing later, so you only film the scenes that you really want to. So that, I think, is pretty good for a camera phone. Very, very versatile, and that includes features you don't always get on camcorders. It also illustrated how smooth the playback was and that it picked up my voice for recording which also illustrates that on phone calls the voice comes across loud and clear which is obviously beneficial. The music player is also good and I'll give a demonstration with one track that I've copied onto it. The volume is also quite good too. Loud And quieter and loud again. The only slight disappointment is it's a mono speaker as opposed to stereo but we're talking a sub £100 phone here so you couldn't really expect for more and even so the sound is still pretty good it's quite acceptable and if you don't like the sound for any reason you can always pop in an external speaker or use a Bluetooth speaker and also adjust the tone via a graphic equaliser. I'll just have a look at internet surfing because that's obviously a very important feature on any phone now. 
go to bbc.co.uk, for example, just to as a sample website. As you can see there, the phone is pretty much faster than our internet connection. Very, very speedy and very responsive. Let's just take a look at the top news story there. And zoom in. As you can see, the screen is very clear and throughout it's always very responsive. Images are bright and clear. Text is very easy to read. Go back and look at another page. We don't have the fastest internet connection here, but even so, it's still quite responsive. And the pictures are loading quite quickly as well. So there really is nothing at all to fault on this phone. The few little niggles, I'd like it to be compatible BT Wi-Fi, stereo speakers would have been nice, but really it's nitpicking. This is an absolutely superb phone. It's comfortable to hold, it's not particularly heavy, it's certainly not bulky, and the camera on it is fantastic. So for anyone looking for a good quality smartphone with an excellent camera, and particularly if you also want to do video as well and benefit from the video filming light, the pause facility, etc., then you really couldn't go wrong with this.